Why transplant? You will want to transplant for a couple of reasons. First of all, you may have sprouted seeds indoors because they do not tolerate cold weather but need a long growing season to reach maturity. Such examples include tomatoes and peppers. Secondly, you may not have had time to germinate seeds yourself and instead bought seedlings from a store. In either case, there's a point where the seedling will outgrow its pot and need to be planted outside in the garden. What can be transplanted? Some of the types of plants that do well with transplanting include tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, melon, cauliflower, and other members of the cruciferous vegetable family. Cucumbers and squash can be transplanted, but this must be done before they develop their third leaves or they experience transplant shock. Do not transplant root crops like carrots, beets, turnips, parsnips, and radishes because the roots can be easily damaged. When to transplant? Most of the plants that prefer warm weather are transplanted in late May or the beginning of June. You can measure the temperature of the soil to see if it reaches the ideal temperature suggested on the seed package. To decide if your seedlings are ready to be planted outside, you can also look at their leaves. If they have grown two sets of true leaves, which are the leaves that photosynthesize, they're ready to go outside. You want to make sure the plants have been hardened off before you transplant. If the nights are still too cold, you can cover the seedlings with a makeshift greenhouse. It is ideal to transplant in the morning before the sun is strong, or in the evening, or on a cloudy day. This allows the plant some time to recover and adjust without the extra stress of drying out. How to transplant. First, you must harden off the seedlings by helping them to adjust to outdoor conditions. You can start by gently brushing them with your hand when you water so as to build up the strength of their stems. Next, you can leave them outside during the day in a shady spot. After a couple of days, you can start leaving them outside overnight if it is not too cold. Put them in a sunny spot outside for a couple of days. After that, they should be well adjusted to the outdoors. Choose a place in your garden for the plants and make sure they are properly spaced as indicated on the seed package. Dig a pit that is the same size or a little deeper than the pot the plants are in. Put compost at the bottom of the pit and mix it in. If you are transplanting seedlings out of a plastic pot, gently squeeze the pot all around to loosen the roots. Place your whole hand over the top of the pot and tip it upside down. The whole root mass will slide out. Turn it over and place the root mass in the hole. Fill the hole with dirt, making sure to cover the entire root mass and gently pat it down. Be sure to not damage the roots, stems, or leaves while carrying out this procedure, as all these plant parts are essential for the collection and distribution of water and nutrients. If you are using decomposable pots, this process will be simpler as you will not have to remove the plant from its pot, but instead place the entire pot in the hole and make sure it is covered by dirt. It is essential to water after transplanting to help the root recover. Give the soil a good soaking, but do not saturate it to the point that puddles are remaining on the surface. Experiment and Curriculum Integration Experiment One possible experiment is carried out in the following way. Germinate seeds of the same plant inside and some outside. Research to find out what temperature and conditions are preferred by this plant. In what part of the world did this plant originate? Predict whether the seed planted inside or outside will be first to germinate and grow. Will the ones inside or outside grow faster? Observe and record any growth scene. What conditions and temperatures did you discover are most ideal for this particular plant? Why? Try this test out with other types of seeds. Curriculum integration. This experiment integrates some prescribed learning outcomes from the processes of science, earth and space science, and life science for kindergarten to grade seven as outlined in the BC school curriculum. Examples of PLOs that can be covered include, ask questions that roster investigations and explorations relative to the content. Describe changes that occur in daily and seasonal cycles and their effect on living things. Measure weather in terms of temperature, precipitation, cloud cover, and wind speed and direction. Analyze impacts of weather. <laughs>